Do you want to change the shape of your footage without the hassle of using masks? Make it literally any shape you want, do this or even this, and all in Premiere Pro? Well, except for those last two, they're in After Effects. I'll show you how to do them too. Now this effect is super easy, it's beginner friendly, it's great for commentaries, let's plays, and it's a great editing tool to have in your arsenal. And today I'm gonna show you how to do it all. Right, so I have my footage here that I wanna cut out into a circle to put on top of something playing behind it. So we have it in our composition, and really the only thing you're gonna need here is a PNG shape of a circle. So I already have a circle PNG, and all we need to do is just drag it on top of the footage in our composition, all right? stretch it out to the duration of the clip that you want to cut out and then go over to your effects and search for track matte key drag that onto the footage you want to cut out not the png shape layer then we're going to come up into effects controls for that footage layer and come down to track matte key for matte you're going to select the layer that your png shape is on so for me that is v2 so i'm going to click on video 2 and boom just like that, my footage is now cut out. Now, what if I don't like where the position of that shape is? Well, then you can just click on that PNG shape layer and you can move it. You can make it bigger, smaller, whatever you want to do. Make it so it fits where you want on that footage. If I want to move the overall effect, you have to do it on the footage layer. So you can move that around, you can make it smaller, you can put it into the corner, whatever you want to do. Now, here's the thing. I want to have something behind this footage something playing in the background. But right now, I don't have a video layer where I can put something behind it. So I need to grab both of these clips and drag them one up. But you'll see, now my clips disappeared. So what's happened there is the track matte key effect is still using video two as the track matte, the thing that's cutting out my footage. So we need to go back into our, that effect and now select video three, whatever that shape layer is on and boom, just like that, it's there. Now I can go into Essential Graphics, grab a background that I got from Peter McKinnon's pack a few years ago, it's really useful though, and I can drag it in the back there, and just like that, I now have a background playing with my footage in a circle. Really easy to do. Now one little tip here is if you have a bunch of different layers that you're playing around with and you're gonna be moving things around a lot, what you can then do is actually nest this effect so you just right click and click nest. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna compile both the footage, the shape, and the cutting out of that footage into one clip that you can then move around to whatever layer. And you don't have to play around with the settings. You can keep moving it around layer after layer and the effect is still gonna be applied. What's also useful about this is now we can go in and apply things like a drop shadow to it. So we can drag it on there. Drop shadow, you can't see it because the background's black here. But let's say I go in and put a color map behind. So you can really play around with this effect. Again, now I can just click on this and I can move it wherever I want. But let's say now while editing the video, I realize a circle just isn't the right shape. And instead I want a rounded rectangle. So now I have a rounded rectangle PNG. I'm just gonna drag it in. I'm gonna delete this circle that I had and I'm just going to put this new shape on top. Again, adjust the position, the scale of this shape. And that looks pretty good there. And you don't have to apply anything because the track matte effect is already on your footage layer and the shape is now cutting it out. And if you have a PNG shape layer of anything, your footage can be turned into that super easily with just basically one click. Right, so now I have my footage cut out into the shape I want. But let's say I wanna zoom into it or move around while maintaining the same size of my cutout shape. How do you do that? Because if I come up into our footage and move it around, I'm moving around the whole effect. Well. You need two effects to do this with the track matte key, the first of which is transform. So you just search for it in your effects panel, transform, it's going to be under video effects and distort, drag it into your effects controls panel for your footage layer, but drag it above track matte key. Because if it's below track matte key and we move the scale, it's gonna move the entire effect. But if we put it above, that's telling Premiere Pro the order in which to apply our effects. So we apply the transform first, then the track matte. So here now I can create keyframes for scaling in. But here's the thing, you'll notice when I move around the position, I'm still moving around the entire effect. So what we also need to do is search for the offset effect. It's gonna be under distort again, drag it onto your footage layer, and again, above the track matte key effect. 
Now we can adjust the shift center to, to adjust the position of our footage within the track mat. So we come here to where it's zoomed in, move it down, and then boom, you can see that my footage is now zooming in within that track mat, within that cutout shape. And it was really easy to do with just two effects. So now let's make this footage transform, have the shapes transform using the exact same techniques, but giving a slightly different effect. So I have this shapes changing MOV file that I've created using After Effects, where you can see the shapes morph through. Now if I apply the track mat key effect to our footage and I select video two, you see that nothing has happened. Well, that's because this layer here, this shapes morphing, isn't a transparent PNG shape. Now I could make it transparent using After Effects and I'll show you how I would do that in a second here. But you know, you might get files from different stock footage websites where you have a black background and a white shape or vice versa. So what do we do here? Well, it can still work in the track matte key effect, but you come down to compositing using, instead of matte alpha, we select matte luma. And you can see here, now the effect works. And you can also use this for things like ink transitions, which look really, really cool. So you can see here, I have this white background where ink sort of splashes onto it. It looks really, really cool. And we can use this in a transition using a track matte key effect. But if we come onto our clip here, I've already dragged it in, you'll see that it's actually taking away from the footage. So in order to fix that, we need to go into the effects controls and click on reverse. And that way we can see now that it's revealing our footage and it looks really, really cool. But going back to After Effects, if I want a transparent background, I could render this out using RGB plus alpha. That's a little bit technical and a much easier way to do it, especially if it's something as simple as shapes, is to literally just drag in your After Effects project into Premiere Pro and it's gonna ask you which composition you wanna select. I only have one here, the one where I'm changing the shapes. It doesn't have a background in that file. So if I just click on okay, now I have it here, I can drag it on top and you see that it's a transparent background. So all we have to do is apply the track mat key effect to video two and boom, it works. Right, so now I'm gonna show you a really cool technique that you can use using After Effect to give you this result. So all we need to do is create a new composition in the same size of our sequence in Premiere Pro. So mine's 1920 by 1080p. You make it 20 seconds, 30 seconds, however long you want your cutout footage to be. So I'm just gonna go for 20 seconds here. All right, and the only thing we need to do here is to go get a free plugin for After Effects called Video Copilot Saber. They show you how to install it, but basically all we wanna do is to come in to our layer and select a new solid layer. It doesn't matter what color you call it. And now you wanna come over to Effects and Presets and type in Saber. All right, drag it on. And you see here that we just have this random one line that's glowing. What we need to do is make it the same shape as our cutout footage. So I have a circle, so I'm gonna come into the ellipse tool, drag a circle onto here. So now come over to the settings for the Saber effect, come down to Customize Core, instead of selecting Saber, select Layer Masks. And right there, we can see that we have it here. But you'll also notice that the glow is actually gonna to touch the border, which will actually cut off in our Premiere Pro composition. So we're also probably gonna to want to shrink this mask down. If you want a different effect, you can go for electric, you can go for fire, but I'm gonna go for just the default, default one, because that looks cool. So now we wanna animate this line sort of traveling around our mask. So what we're gonna do is come down to, again, in Customize Core, select the start size, and bring that down to around 50%. So we see if we click off here, that there's sort of like a tapering off of this mask. And then all we wanna do is just animate the mask evolution. So click on the stopwatch icon here to create a keyframe, drag it across to the end of your composition and just drag this out. And you'll see that as we come over here and click play, the line is now animating around our mask. Now, this is where that technique with the Premiere Pro and After Effects working together comes in handy to give you that transparent background. So all I need to do is save this as an After Effects composition, which is gonna call it Animated Line. And we're gonna come back into Premiere Pro. I am going to go into my file here and there we have Animated Line. Make sure that you have your project selected where you can drag it in. But we drag it in, we're gonna click on Comp1. I really should have given that a better name, but that's my Animated Line. It's gonna be in this folder here because that's where I dragged it. Simply just drag it on top of your footage. Oh, 
one thing here, which I forgot to do, if we come back into After Effects, come into Render Settings, and then down here underneath Composite Settings, we wanna click on Transparent. Now that means that the background is now transparent. So when we come back into Premiere Pro after saving, we should now see that, yeah, it's now transparent. So all we have to do here is just adjust the size to line up with our little cutout footage here, which takes a little bit of fiddling, but eventually you'll get it and right there. Now it's all lined up. So if we want to move everything all together, now we can nest it and we'll call this uh, cutout footage because labeling your footage always helps you later on. And now I can move around the entire effect to get up the corner and if I press play you're gonna see that line is now animating around and it looks really really cool now if I press play you're gonna see that something funny is going on here it's not showing my footage being cut out properly and what I find sometimes with the track mat key effect is Premiere Pro has a little bit of trouble playing it back properly so just drop down your resolution to half and that fixes it up so if I come back to the start here press play you'll see that it's playing perfectly fine. So if you want to check how your track mats are looking, just set it to half. So next up, we're going to be creating this effect where I'm cut out in a circle and I'm punching out of it. Now, we already know how to do the cut out of the circle using a track mat, but how do you do the punching? Well, let me show you. So I've got some footage here of me just punching into the corner, making sure that everything is in frame, that I'm center frame, and that when I'm punching, it's not going out of camera because otherwise this effect won't work. And really what we need to do is just find a way to cut out my arms punching so there's no background behind them so we can put that on top of the circle cutout. Now there's a hundred different ways you do this. You could individually mask them out uh, frame by frame in After Effects. You could use the roto brush in there, but there's a much easier way to do it using artificial intelligence with a software called Runway Green Screen. So basically all we wanna do is just render out the clip that we wanna cut out for the duration. So I've already rendered this out and then I'm gonna to go to Runaway Green Screen and upload it to this website. Now they have a free version and also a paid version. I'm on the lowest tiered pay version. So basically you just upload your footage into here. You can see it's already there. You come into Create New Project, Green Screen, because we wanna cut out the footage and it'll be using the exact same technique that we've used before. So I'm just gonna drag in my uploaded footage into the composition. We're gonna wait for it to upload and then I'm just gonna simply click on myself and the artificial intelligence is gonna analyze the footage and cut out everything that it thinks is me. And you can see here that it actually missed a little part. So I'm just gonna click on that. It's gonna generate again and just cut out everything that I need. Now, importantly, always click preview and watch through your footage because there's gonna be some things that it misses. So you can see here, there's a few splotches that it's just not picking up. How do we address that? Well, we just pause it, come to the point, in which you can see that there is some parts missing. So you can see here, and then we're gonna come over to the controls, click on include, and that's gonna give you a brush when you click on the brush, that you can now just paint over parts that it missed. And once you do that, it's gonna save the keyframe and generate that through your entire footage. So it's gonna remember that you said, this is what I wanna cut out, and it's gonna apply that to the rest of the clip. All right, so I've gone through now and I've fixed up any parts that the artificial intelligence has missed. If I come to the start here and click preview, you can see that everything is pretty well cut out. The center stuff doesn't really matter too much because that's gonna be within the circle. More on that later. But once we're finished with our green screen cutout, we're just gonna click on done masking up here in the corner. It's gonna load up. Now you can see here, I now have my footage cut out, but how does this apply with the technique that we used before? We wanna come over here to our export clip and we have a original, or we can come down and click on this and click on mask. And if we have a preview of this mask, you're gonna notice something pretty familiar. See, now it's a black and white footage like we did in that previous shape tutorial. So we're just gonna click on export mask. That's gonna load up in our assets folder. When we come back in to assets over here, we see that it's exporting right now, kind of rendering it out. It only takes around 30 seconds for something like this. We download it and then we can bring it into Premiere Pro. So we now have our black and white track mat that we can drag into Premiere Pro just like this. Now, importantly, we're gonna need two versions of our original footage. So you wanna duplicate that, bring one to the top, leave a layer, cause that's gonna be for the circle cutout. Drag in our boxing cutout. 
Now, because I've rendered out this entire clip, everything is lined up perfectly. So now I can go to effects, search for track mat, drag that onto the footage. And again, do you remember what to do? In this one, when it's a black and white footage, we wanna to go to matte luma, select the layer that it's on, and boom, just like that, the footage is now cut out. Now it's not 100% perfect, I could do some fine tuning here and there, but it's pretty good for what we need today. So now we'll turn on the bottom layer, go in, grab the circle, bring it on top of that bottom layer, drag on track matte key, again, go into effects and controls, select the video layer that the circle is on, so video two, this time it is a matte alpha, and basically the effect is nearly done. But you'll notice that my torso, the bottom half of me, is sticking out of the circle. So how do we address that? Well, we can come up onto this black and white layer here. So if I turn this off, you can see it's that black and white track mat that we did in run red green screen. And basically what we wanna do here is come into opacity in the effects controls. And this time we're gonna use a mask. So all we wanna do is just click kind of like on the circle outline. Doesn't matter too much for this part, but we wanna kind of follow the edge of the circle and then bring it around here. So all of the arm punching is gonna be in frame. Zoom out a little bit and then come here. And boom, just like that, now everything looks good. Now there's a little bit of clipping here with my elbow. So planning wise, I could have done that a little bit better. Um, and I will adjust the mask to see, you know, what works better. But overall, now I have an effect where I'm punching out of a circle. Really cool, really easy, and really simple to do. So if you guys use this technique in your own videos, please let me know, put your videos in the comments down below. I'll be sure to check them out. I'd love to see that. Thanks for watching. I hope this tutorial helped and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.